The text for this morning's meditation is Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard, had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God bless this reading of the word. Our text today tells the story of the visit of the Magi to the Christ child. January 6th is the day on which this story has traditionally been celebrated in the Christian tradition. And it is variously called Epiphany or Three Kings Day or in some traditions, Little Christmas. And actually some groups of Christians share uh, the giving and receiving of gifts on Little Christmas, January 6th. This well-loved story of a star and wise men and a wicked king and a small child tells us that Christ came for all people, not just for his own people. And as Christians have turned this story over and over in our imaginations and our hearts, many legends have been born. New Testament scholar William Barclay wrote of the legend of the star which guided the wise men to the baby Jesus. And according to this legend, once the star's work was completed and its guiding light then fell into the well in Bethlehem where it remains even today and can still be seen sometimes by those whose hearts are pure. The Bible doesn't tell us how many wise men came to pay their respects to the Christ child, but in the very early days of the Christian church, a legend arose that there were actually 12 wise men. Imagine what our Christmas cards and our Christmas pageants would look like if we went with that legend. Eventually, tradition settled on three visitors from the East, maybe because of the three gifts mentioned, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And later legend make, makes these mysterious visitors into kings. The Gospel of Matthew only tells us that they were magi from the East, members of a priestly caste of men who were experts in astrology and perhaps fortune telling and maybe the science and medicine of their day. And it's possible that these wise men were from Persia. It is legend too that has given the wise men their names, K 
Caspar and Melchior and Balthazar. The Bible is silent on the question of their names, but legend has it that Melchior was an old man, gray-haired with a long beard, and that it was he who brought the gift of gold. Caspar was said to be young and beardless, ruddy in complexion, and it was he who brought the gift of frankincense. And Balthazar was imagined to be dark complexioned with a beard just newly grown upon him. And it was he who was said to have brought the gift of myrrh to the Christ child. Imagination has filled in what the Bible has not told us. These three gifts of the Magi have reminded centuries of Christians of the work of Jesus Christ. They gave him gold because he is the King of Kings who claims our allegiance and our commitment. They gave him frankincense because he is our great high priest who bridges the gap between a holy God and a lost and wandering humanity. They gave him myrrh which was often used for embalming purposes in those days because Christ came to die on the cross for you and for me. The Bible begins this story of following a star of wonder with these words. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Have you ever seen that little sign that reads, wise men still seek him? These days, to be more inclusive, I think we would say the wise still seek him. And while we are seeking, we need to know that it is God who is doing the leading. We seek perhaps for God's presence in our lives in some new way, but God has already found us and is with us every step of the journey. Our story tells of travelers from another land whose religious experience was not the same as that of the people living in and around Jerusalem. These travelers were looking for God to be involved in the world in some new way. We may imagine that they were committed to a lifelong pursuit of truth. The story of the Magi may challenge us to just at just this point. Do we expect God to do anything new in our lives and in our world this year? And are we watching for it? This is the second time in the first two chapters of Matthew's gospel where the author has shown us how God works through all kinds of people, even through those who don't seem to have the right religious credentials. In the genealogy in Matthew chapter one, uh, Matthew has included four women who were outsiders in some way. And yet all four were part of God's plan, which led up to the arrival of a savior for us in the world. This is good news. There is room in God's family for you and for me Regardless of your religious or ethnic background, there is room in God's family for you. If you are an honest seeker of truth and of God's will in your life, then God will lead you. God's hand is already on you. God will honor that honest seeking. The life of faith does not mean eliminating all doubt before we begin the quest. We just step out and begin the journey in the faith that God is there with us already. We have come to this hour of worship this morning in all different spiritual conditions. In whatever condition your heart may be this new year, you can come with all of your questions. You can come to Christ just as you are, as the wise men did so long ago. You can come and God will bless your journey and God will lead you to the place where you need to be this year. If God could lead these foreign wise men to the Christ child by means of a star, 
God can certainly lead us to Christ today if we are honestly seeking him. We know that many people perhaps are not looking actively for Christ these days. To them, this story may be only a pious legend and little more. Maybe the story of Jesus seems too remote from the daily lives of some people. How could a person from so long ago and so far away possibly have an impact on our lives today? That is the decisive question of Christmas. The wise men came asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? If Jesus was a king, he was a king like no other that we have known before or since. King Herod ruled in Palestine from about 40 BCE until 4 BCE. Herod knew how to wield power. He knew how to get things done. The rebuilding of the temple, which had taken 40 years, was his big building project. But Herod was jealous of his power, and he killed those, including family members, who got in his way. The world is full of people like Herod, who seek power and wealth at the expense of others. But King Jesus came to give up his power and to lay down his life for you and for me because he loves us with the love of God. We don't know if the wise men saw all of that in the face of the baby lying before them, but Jesus was the kind of king that the world needed that year and the kind that we need this year. We know that our neighbors do not all see a king when they look in Jesus' direction, but he is the kind of king that we need. When the wise men found the Christ child, they found the king who was born to die for the sins of the world. They offered him gold and frankincense and myrrh because he is king and priest and sacrifice. Christ entered our world and offered his life for Jews living in first century Palestine, for wise men coming from distant lands, and for men and women and boys and girls in Pennsylvania in 2024. This new year, will we accept his gift of himself to us? Will we accept his royal claim on our lives? Will we offer him our commitment in discipleship in 2024? That would be a gift far better than gold or frankincense or myrrh. Finally, listen again to verse 10 of our story. We read, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Another translation reads, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Joy is contagious. Joy is what makes the Christian faith contagious. There's a famous photograph we probably have all seen from the end of World War II in which a young sailor is shown kissing a young lady. The war was over. The issue was settled. Christmas was the divine invasion into our world. On the cross, the issue was settled. On Easter morning, the decisive battle was won. The troubles of this world, including yours and mine, are not the final word. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. May that be true in each of our lives this week. Amen.